We are talking about Chinese medicine on the show today, and I have such an amazing guest for you. His name is Dr. Kevin Preston. He's based out of Canada, up in British Columbia, and I found him on the Wellness and Wisdom podcast, and I was just so impressed with his energy and how he's showing up in the world, um, and I've been following him since then. And I was like, I got to have him on the show. You guys need to, you need an intro to Dr. Kevin Preston if you don't already follow him. Um, speaking of which, his Instagram is like DR, just DR Kevin Preston, Dr. Kevin Preston. Uh, I highly recommend following him there. I really like the energy of what he's putting out in social media. Um, and his website is drkevinpreston.com. And he also has another website called newhumanevents.com, which we're going to talk about in the show. Um, he just had this event. I actually really wanted to go personally myself, but couldn't for logistical reasons. Um, but yeah, he had like Dr. Zach Bush there and just seemed like an amazing team of really heart-centered leaders in health and relationships and, you know, everything that goes into a healthy, thriving human. So you can check that out as well. Um, he does do have group type things and other events. So make sure you check out his website or just follow him on, on Instagram if you're curious to learn more after you hear this amazing episode. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Here is Dr. Kevin Preston. Okay, so Kevin, I realize that this is going to be my first episode dedicated to Chinese medicine. I, I may have had some Chinese medicine doctors on before. I'm not even sure, but we haven't like specifically gone into that. So you're going to be our official reference guide for Chinese medicine on the Inside Out Health Podcast. Awesome. Which, Thank you. <laughs> which I'm really excited about because I've, you know, I found you through um, Josh Trent's podcast. And I think my listeners, guys, tell me if you agree as you listen to him, because like there's there's certain people where there's like an energetic resonance, right? Like I can, I can feel it in you that you're like drinking from the good cup. You know, there's like, so there's, so there's a source where you're getting your information that I can tell is similar to the source I'm getting my information from. And if that sounds really quacky, I'm sorry. I hope that doesn't sound quacky for you for the rest of your life. And that that sounds normal. Cause it's a really cool place to be. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, as I was preparing for this, I was like really thinking about that. I was like, okay, this is going to be our Chinese medicine episode. And I started, I'm like, okay, what are all the components of Chinese medicine, which we'll have you talk about obviously, but, um, as for my quick reference, you know, acupuncture, uh, understanding the synergy between different herbals, which is so cool. Cause they're like proving it all with science now. And that's kind of fun. Um, and massage and, you know, soul work, meditation, like how you, how are you actually doing like on a spiritual and, and, and physical plane sense, you know? And I was thinking, man, like how long has this been around thousands of years? I was trying to Google it. You probably have better info than me, obviously, but it was like, some said 2000, some said 4,000, some said 5,000. So it, for at least thousands of years, this has been a well-respected practice of medicine. Right. Absolutely. And then I was thinking about yoga and Ayurveda and thousands of years, right? Like you, all the limbs of yoga, right? If you guys aren't familiar, it was like breath work and meditation and actual physical practices and food and all of that. And then I was like, I got curious. I, I Google, how long has pharmaceutical medicine been around? <laughs> and it was like modern pharmaceutical medicine started in the early 19th century with the development of penicillin and insulin. So I'm like, okay, so about a hundred years. And in the last hundred years or in some change, most of the world has gone from the most tried and true, reliable, you know, sources of actual healing and medicine to now that's considered alternative. Now that's considered almost quack or woo woo. That's some really good marketing. That's some really good marketing, you know? And so I'm curious your thoughts about that. Cause this is your world. Like, I guess, let me be more specific with my question. How do you feel about the fact that so many people don't know about Chinese medicine and that they think all that's available to them is, is what Western medicine is currently providing? Yeah. I think generally speaking, we go through cycles in time. And I'm really curious about that, you know, the ebb and the flow of culture and society and belief structures, even in sort of micro amounts. If you look at the last 40, 50 years, there's been different medical practices that have become really popular. And then at times they fall out of favor for various reasons. And then it might come back again 
like 30, 40 years later, maybe like fashion in some way. Yeah. <laughs> you see things kind of move in and out and different, you know, flavors and tastes and things. And so medicine, in my view, can be similar in some way. And we don't know what our ancestors did further back. And so if we could talk to them, you know, great grandparents, double great grandparents and further on, most of that would lead to indigenous culture, medicine, you know, the medicine men, the medicine women, all those types of things, plants, herbs, living in harmony with the earth and almost any generation of like culture that goes back far enough, you would find that. Yeah. So what you're speaking to is a relatively new phenomenon of business and scalability and marketing and the roots of where a lot of the original medicine came from, even modern medicine, almost every drug synthetically produced originally was found through a plant, trees, bark, you know, it did still come from nature at some point, and then it's been synthesized into something different. So there's roots of the natural world and absolutely everything. And yeah. through that process, yeah, a lot has been forgotten and lost. And it, it seems like, the pendulum is swinging back now, yeah. which is pretty yeah. exciting. There's so much more and you know, everything I think that you and I are interested in, it's coming back on the scene in a really, really big way. And, and that's yeah. pretty exciting. We're in style. <laughs> yeah, we're back, <laughs> back in, in fashion we're back in style. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm just before we get into a little more about Chinese medicine, I'm just curious what um, stimulated a white guy in Canada and <laughs> to become a Chinese medicine doctor. Do you mind sharing? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share. And, and <laughs> even as I feel into that, I think the energetics are really important. And um, thank you for being so gracious with what you shared to start off with. And there's sort of a mutual synergy that I feel in your energy field as well. And the way that you speak and the way that you communicate, it's rooted deeply in your system. And I, I feel like that parallel is what drew me into Chinese medicine, that there was a real depth that I could feel. And even all those years ago, I've been practicing for over 15 years and spent a decent amount of time in school. I think the early days of school to me was being outside and being in the forest and being in nature. And I grew up on a farm and I was around animals. And so I was really immersed in the natural world and I was you know, deeply having my hands in gardens and dirts and all of those things without really knowing how healthy that would later become and the science to back that up. But just I think our natural tendency, if we are left to our own devices as children, we would gravitate to playing in the grass and in the trees in the forest. It's like a magical world in there. And what I have found now as an adult, bringing that magical world forward is actually very real and to to get on this pathway I, yeah you're right it's not maybe the everyday pathway to talk to your high school guidance counselor and they're like you know what you should become a chinese medicine doctor that was definitely not part of the conversation especially where i grew up is like rural community kind of small town and you know really grateful to have grown up that way and it was actually through my own pain and suffering injuries especially i was really immersed in sports and hockey and like a lot of good canadian <laughs> kids there <laughs> got a lot to do in the winter time you put some skates on and you'll be playing hockey and and i loved it i loved sport i loved moving my body and you know there's consequences that show up with that sometimes a lot of injuries and through the injury process early on as a teenager eventually then you know getting into playing at higher levels of hockey and junior and college and trying to decide what my direction was going to be, I kept wrecking my knee over mm -hmm. and over again. So I blew my right knee out like five times over a period of about five or six years through mm -hmm. some surgeries in the mix there as well. And that led me to get acupuncture and mm -hmm. acupuncture worked fantastic. And it was such a new concept that is so old, but it was new to me at the time. We didn't grow up with any of it at all or really into alternative medicine. My mom was a nurse. And so that was more of my upbringing. So this was completely unknown, but somehow my, either my soul or my inner knowing knew something more than even probably what my intellect did, but I got to see the results and it helped with swelling. I recovered way faster than anybody else. And the surgeon said something like that to me of, I don't know what you've been doing, but you you're rehabbing at a, a lightning speed here. So keep it up, especially post-surgery. And that's what I was doing. I was doing a ton of acupuncture. It really made a big impact and being a really curious person. I'm a guy who asks questions all the time, questions, everything. 
Yeah, I, I got myself into reading some books on Chinese medicine and Chinese medicine philosophy and how you would always treat the root issue. And I remember still to this day where I was as I was reading some of the material and how much it impacted me at a deep level. It just seemed to make so much sense. Like, mm -hmm. of course, you would ask questions. Of course, you would find out why is this symptom here? How come you have this issue coming up? Why is the body expressing this way? And then you would treat that very individually. You wouldn't just do the same treatment across the board. And I remember reading that and sitting back for a moment and just letting that move through my system. And something shifted in me or something was remembered or woken up and pretty soon that was a direction because I was in science at the time. I thought maybe I'd go Western medicine. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do 100% something in in the sports world. I had had a lot of great sports docs and therapists and things. So that made sense to combine those. If I wasn't going to be doing sports professionally, maybe I could do it on the, the medicine side. And, you know, I think there's a different plan or destiny in whatever <laughs> your beliefs might yeah. be that, oh, no, this guy's got to go this direction yeah. and we're we're going to lead him to this in some way where he he can't miss it and mm -hmm. yeah here i am mm, thanks for sharing yeah i think you're when you were describing that moment of reading about it and, you know the curious mind i mean like oh this all makes so much sense it actually reminded me i know those feelings i know those those it reminded me of when you're talking about being in nature as a kid you know, and I hope, I hope everybody had some of those moments as a kid. I feel like at least in our generation ish, like a lot of, cause there was no internet when we were little, little, right. Or at least me, I don't know. I might <laughs> be older, but <laughs> there was no internet when I was a little kid. And so yeah, I man. would, <laughs> you neither. Okay. Yeah. I would go outside all the time. And I, I can like distinctly remember moments of just playing with clovers or like just digging a hole in the ground and looking at all the roots and looking at the finding worms and like just those super deep present meditative moments. And I think when you talked about that moment it, of reading about it and learning about Chinese medicine, it feels similar. I don't know about you, but like those kind of yeah. moments where it's like this, like, mm, there's something happening inside of me. Like I'm fully present with myself. Um, I think it's, I just wanted to highlight that because I think it's important for us to honor those kind of, wow, something's happening here. Something's pulling at me. Something matters here for my soul. Like yeah. go this way, you know, it, it yeah. feels similar to when you were a little kid digging in the dirt. It's this very like self-connected moment. Do you yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> I, I do. And as you're speaking about it, I can feel a lot of energy move through my body. Some would say goosebumps or, you know, got the chills. And that's one of the ways that I track things in my system and realizing right. over many years and thousands of hours in the clinic that we do have that capacity in our, mm -hmm. ourselves. And mm -hmm. I have so many memories of, you know, spending the day literally just digging in a creek bed, digging up rocks. Right. Me trying too. to find the right <laughs> rock, whatever that means. I, I'm going to find something here. And literally hours would go by of just sitting in the stream or beside it, hands in the mud. And, you know, as you describe that, that's what gets invoked in me is how present I was. I wasn't mm -hmm. thinking about anything else right. other than what I was doing. And mm -hmm. so as a practitioner, when I'm with patients, that's similar. Or mm -hmm. when there was nature around, I grew up hunting and fishing and what I discovered, I didn't actually enjoy the hunting part so much other than the communication I would have with animals and trees and plants and right. sitting on a stump in the woods for three or four hours straight. And when you're that right. still and listening in a forest of all kinds of creatures, many things start happening and it mm -hmm. becomes alive with birds and bees and you know, giant deer and stags would like walk right past me and I'd just be sitting so still or holding my breath, but you're connecting in mm -hmm. a deeper way. And, you know, it feels like there's that resonance in what we're speaking about from a health mm -hmm. point of view, your body's communicating all the time, yeah. but we're also yeah. so busy in society that those communication points that the body brings forward, we're missing them, you know, collectively. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I probably missed them many times in my life and I probably still do, but I miss them less because I, I'm feeling the words that people say and I'm listening. If somebody's sitting in front of me in a, a patient visit, how they sit down, how they say hello, the way mm -hmm. that they shift in their chair, depending on the conversation that's happening or the way that they, mm -hmm. they speak the words and the energy behind them can tell us mm -hmm. a ton. 
Yeah. All, all of it is really intricate information. And that's one of the things I've loved about Chinese medicine is they, they would teach that. Nice. Look at it, look at the tongue, check the pulse, look yeah. at the eyes. You can tell so much looking mm-hmm. somebody in the eyes. Yeah. And I, I think we've kind of lost that in some way. Yeah. You know, we're afraid to look each other in the eyes almost. And there's so, so much unspoken data totally. about our health and wellness and intuition that is, is really yeah. alive. Yeah. Uh, One of my favorite, no, hands down my favorite quote about intuition. It's so random, the source, but it's so good. It comes from like some Sherlock Holmes TV show or something. But I found it when I was just like Google searching for intuition quotes for like a program I was writing. And I was like, the quote is this, intuitions represent too many data points for the conscious mind to comprehend. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right. Like that, that the body language, the the energetic frequencies, the look behind the eyes, the what was that subtle shift in someone's energy when they said that? Like the, you know. But if you're just going off pure information, it's like, well, it says. I mean, it says their B12 is good and everything looks good. And <laughs> yeah, all the all the data that may yeah. or may not be relevant. And uh, I yeah. do feel in my in my own mind, my own projection of myself is that I am like Sherlock Holmes in the, in the clinic visits. Like I'm looking for right. clues. I'm totally. investigating what's going on here and like what landed this person in my right. office in the first Definitely. place. And everything is relevant. Yeah. Not just one key symptom piece. And then we'll focus on that. I want to see the the picture because I want to see the whole forest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So tell us, let's, let's segue into your practice, you know, like what helps you do that? What, what, what's like an initial visit that someone would have with you or yeah, with you, let's go with you instead of just, all right, all right. Well, um, <laughs> well, and my visits with me have changed a lot mm-hmm. over the years. And so that how they, they were in the past, you know, somebody come in, we'd sit down and there's the typical, like, Hey, how can I, be of service today, what's going on? And they'll have filled out an intake form. So I I often have data to go on and, you know, a bit of health history. And then we'd start a conversation and that is still true today. I have a conversation with every patient I'm seeing in person and I I do teach and mentor online and I've got a lot of different things on the go. There's Mm -hmm. still the beginning point is a conversation though. Yeah. And then the years that have gone by and having way more experience and way more time excavation of my own body psyche spirit mentally emotional right. bodies has taught me so much in order to um, you know show up better for other people and be really grounded so i think that's a big part is i need to get really present and grounded before i see anybody yeah. and then when they come in my energy can sort of like shelter wherever they're coming from however life has been for them or or how much illness or struggle or suffering they've been through they can start to settle into themselves too And then that conversation happens, not just in words, but in energy, maybe even telepathy. You know, people are way more intuitive than what they give themselves credit for. And when they are around somebody who's quiet and present, then there's another level of communication that comes online. So all of that is a part of every visit. And then as they describe their their issues or, you know, their symptoms or things that are going on or parts they're struggling with, I will really listen for those sort of entry points of things that are important of, oh, there's, there's something here. Let me dig into right. that a bit more. And then I might ask a few other questions. And then from a Chinese medicine point of view, most traditional Chinese medicine practitioners will look at the tongue, looking at the skin, looking at the eyes, feeling the pulse from a very different lens than conventional medicine. We're not just ca- um, counting the rate we're feeling for the quality of the pulse on the the radial side of the wrist and each of the positions that we'll feel with the different, you know, the finger positions, they're different organ systems. So even Mm -hmm. without a conversation, this is what a lot of people get blown away by. I'd say when they'd see a practitioner that's really adept in their craft and their skill set, you can tell a lot of what's going on in somebody's body by just looking and feeling. And then I might refine that a little bit further with specific questions because I'm also very auditory and, you know, I, I really listen to the words that come through somebody and the, the words they choose, but also mm-hmm. how they say it. And, you know, it's mm-hmm. sometimes hard to describe, but I, I can feel where to go just mm-hmm. by listening to them and, and that'll kind of guide the visit a little bit. So we're, we're taking in each of those data sets from a a Chinese medicine point of view, but then also using some of that intuition. And then mm-hmm. Chinese medicine is actually... It's, it's very scientific, even though 
a lot of people might question that of what do you mean? But it's very logical. Once you get into the paradigm of the medicine itself and the framework, you can take different cues. These symptoms would kind of put you in this direction. And then with that line of questioning, you're like, oh, they have each of these things coming up. That tells me because of all my training where I need to go. And then we'll drop down into almost like a flow chart. If you could mm. see it on a, on a wall mm. here, there'd be a flow down drop menu of you're going to find that pathway all the way through. And at the bottom, you'll, you'll discover the patterns that actually created the whole symptom mm. picture. So mm. I know it looks really intuitive and it, it can be, you know, we can all use our skill sets and gifting in any modalities in life and the backdrop and the paradigm of Chinese medicine and how the organs work, the energy flows through all the meridians and the intersection of all of that, like total system of the body. When you start getting into the details of that, it's, it's really logical, actually. It's, it's pretty fascinating. Mm. So, okay, hold on the question about the pulse thing. Cause that's so cool. Like, so you're saying like you have the fingers put in different positions. Cause I, I haven't gone to a Chinese medicine doctor, I admit. Um, but like you're putting the fingers in different positions and then you're feeling how that impacts how the quality of that pulse feels. And that tells you like which organ systems are like stronger or weaker, essentially. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. And so, mm. you know, for anybody watching this on video, try and show it this way that the radio pulse right here, mm -hmm. there's three finger positions. And so if I'm checking somebody's pulse, I put my three fingers right here. This position is a different organ system as this mm. and this. So we're not just yeah. checking for the organ um, individual information, but I'm also feeling the overall quality of the pulse. How's the strength of it? Is it, does it feel too tight, too loose, weak? There's, there's like 28 kinds of pulse, actually probably even more now from a description wow. point of view in Chinese medicine. Wow. So those are all the parts of training to really decipher and it takes time to get yeah. masterful at feeling it because it's so subtle in the beginning in my training you know the teacher's like oh it's this and this and this see if you can feel <laughs> that and you just put your hands on and you kind of feel like you're just right connected. Yeah, like totally. i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> but after a year two years three years four years wow. decade you start to really attune to what's going on so mm -hmm. at the point i'm at now i almost feel like i don't need to feel the pulse and because when I check it, I already kind of know what's what I'm going to feel. Mm. And at the same time, wow. it's a pretty good, like check in point of, you know, somebody might come in, here's a good example. Lots of energy, you know, huge amount of vitality, they look really healthy and strong, and they're, you know, super pumped up on life. And <laughs> then we get talking and I feel their pulse and their pulse might be super weak. And this is maybe a, a part where I'll say, Hey, how's your energy level? And they're like, Oh, good. Yeah, good. Like I can go all day. And I'll maybe reframe that question, say, um, underneath the adrenaline spike and your stresses and go, go, go. Wow. How's your energy level? Really? What's wow. your internal bank account like? And you'll see them sort of pause. And then mm -hmm. maybe through more questioning, they'll say, you know what? I haven't told anybody this, but I, I'm like, I'm exhausted. I'm so exhausted. Wow. I'm actually concerned about myself, but I'm in a high paid corporate job. You know, I run groups, I do training and, and like, I can't stop. And I, I can tell them like, you need to stop and slow down because mm -hmm. I can feel your pulse. I see what you're presenting. I see your masks. What you're presenting to the world is that you're happy all the time. You're energetic, you're a badass, you're yeah. going for it. But your pulse tells me that you are days or weeks or months away from an incredible crash and wow. maybe a chronic illness is around the corner because you're hanging by a thread and i could feel it in your pulse there's not much left but you wouldn't necessarily know that to see them out in the world so these are the deeper levels of subtlety or sometimes i've seen it the other way around where somebody comes in and they're they're struggling they're tired they haven't been sleeping well they, they kind of feel burnt out and i'm like oh you know let's check in on this what's happening or they might be going through a chronic illness and then I feel the pulse and it actually might feel really grounded and rooted and solid and strong. And I think, oh, you're going to be okay, actually. Mm -hmm. You might need some help, some support. Let's get you some acupuncture, some herbal stuff. Maybe we need to detox some of these things and address what's going on in your life. But your pulse is, is powerful and robust. You've got some deep rooted strength in your system mm -hmm. and you can tell they're on the road to recovery. So it's easy to be deceived by outward symptoms if you don't know how to look a little bit deeper. And so just the pulse alone can tell you 
massive amounts of what is going on or how stressed somebody is or you know i i have been able to tell before if people were pregnant by feeling the pulse and really it's hard to describe the character change like i wouldn't even know how to teach somebody to do that (laughs) it's like a different feeling and there's lots of words to describe it and then sometimes i've said hey are you are you pregnant and they might look at me like no no i'm not and then maybe a week or two later they come in kevin I am pregnant. Like, how did you know wow. that? And sometimes I might say, I don't know. <laughs> this pulse felt different than what it did, you know, maybe the weeks before. There was a quality shift to that, that over time of working with tons of pregnant women, you get to feel the the quality mm. of it. You can tell it's like a, a subtlety and, you know, there's some magic there. Mm, wow. Okay. So between that and then also when you were talking about like hearing, like how you hear, like this, just the way somebody said something or the word they chose or whatever. I think you're hitting on something so important, uh, especially for anyone in any sort of healing role for sure. And also just leadership, even if it's just in your own family with your kids, even in your friendships, um, Mm -hmm. is being aligned and in tune with ourselves. I'm hearing that all of, cause like if you, if we aren't in tune with ourselves and being able to notice, Hey, with love, I think that's such an important part of it is like compassionately and lovingly, uh, being aware. Cause otherwise I don't think you can be really self-aware if you're mean to yourself all the time, like you'll just avoid. Right. right? Yeah. But like, if you're loving and compassionate and safe, like being aligned with ourselves, being in tune with ourselves, noticing things with love and like being present with ourselves. I, I'm hearing that and what you're saying, because otherwise you're not going to notice when somebody's like, oh yeah, but that's just how life is. Or, you know, and you're like going to be like, yep, ha ha ha. That's just how life is. Whereas when you're in tune, you're like, Ooh, ouch. Right. Yeah. Like you hear that and you're like, Ooh, yeah. you know, it's kind so. of the questions where maybe I ask somebody about their stress level. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm fine, you know, kind of normal. And that's where I get curious. What do you mean by normal? What are you experiencing? What's your work week like? What are your relationships like? And we get into the deeper parts. And and I would say, as I'm speaking this, that is one of the things I love about the work that I do, because I've chosen a profession where I get time with people, whether that's group settings or one to one, that I am going to ask those second and third and fourth level questions. Right. And I've seen this even with friends or with myself. If you ask somebody like, Hey, how are you doing today? I'm like, yeah, good. But if you say, how are you actually doing today? The answer probably changes. Yeah. And so in a doctor visit, I think this has maybe been lost in some ways in, in medicine. We might only ask that first level question. How are you feeling? Oh yeah, good. Not much to talk about. The amount of times, and I see this with men more so, it it makes me chuckle. Hey, how you doing? You got anything going on? They're like, no, I'm I'm fine. Um, (laughs) And this is changing now. Often, maybe they say, oh, my wife made me come. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. a lot of men are doing their work now, and they're coming in, and they're they're seeking treatment, which is really beautiful. But honest to God, there has been times where I've asked them, and they didn't fill out their intake form. There's like one thing on there. It was like sore back. And then we get in a discussion and half an hour later, I find out they have kidney stones. They got blood in their urine. They have major prostate issues. They think maybe they did have a heart attack a couple of years ago, but they didn't tell anybody. They're Mm -hmm. maybe super anxious. They can't sleep. They have no energy. They're worried about, you know, losing their job. And if I stopped at that first question with them, I would never get to the real roots of what's going on. And so I love that I I have time Mm -hmm. with people. I choose to take time because that's where the gold is. That's where way more information comes up that is incredibly relevant. Or it might be at the end of a visit, they maybe say, you know, we get more comfortable with each other and and they open up a little bit. And I, I get that. It takes time to maybe build trust. But I've had cases where at the end of the visit, they say, hey, um, would it be concerning, yeah, to have maybe like blood in your urine? And you know, I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you have that going on? And they're like, yeah, I mean, sometimes. Well, how long? I don't know, kind of on and off for like the last three years or something. <laughs> and oh, I'll say, have, have you seen a doc about that? Have you ever told anybody? And they're like, no, I don't know. I was just thinking maybe it would go away. Sometimes it goes away. 
and that might be because we've already had a lot of discussion and they feel safe and there's there's time to unpack all the other things they wanted to talk about or they might feel shy they might feel ashamed or, or embarrassed and they don't know what it means and so I, I love that I get to know patients really well because I'm listening on those mm-hmm. deeper levels that we do get down to the the meaty stuff. And, and that's actually where a lot of the truth starts coming out. Mm-hmm. That's where that second and third you know sets of information can completely change what a treatment mm-hmm. plan would be. And that's why I question people and myself. Mm, I feel, you know, even just intuitively sometimes, oh, there's more here. They're not telling me though. And that's okay. They don't have to tell me everything the first visit, but maybe the next time I see them, I'm going to ask, what about the sadness or the grief that you're feeling? Is that, is that relevant? And then they might start crying. Mm -hmm. And it's just because I'm listening and, and I'm Mm -hmm. thinking about this from a, you know, we'll go back to the hunting analogy and maybe some of your listeners hunt or not, but I think everybody can relate. Even if you're not hunting, if you just go bird watching, if you go running, crashing through the forest, are you going to see or hear anything at all? Or did you scatter every animal within the vicinity of you? Like, of course. And you might think, oh, there's nothing here. But <laughs> it's the way that you carry yourself. And so as a practitioner, sometimes I do have, you know, a direct but kind and soft approach at times, depending on who it is, because I don't want to scare anything off. And if I'm moving through the forest or, you know, if we use that analogy a little bit, if you move slowly, you take pauses, you listen, there is a whole world there. You might see the owl sitting on the branch motionless that you wouldn't have seen if you weren't paying attention, or you might see, you know, a deer and two fawns, you know, get up from their bedding and walk through the sunlight or something or a butterfly or a spider web that's got yeah. dew glistening in that, um, you know, that sunrise. And when I think of that in my own life, how much is available to us every day to pay right. attention to that we don't, we, we could miss it. And that also includes like the healthy things of, did you notice how your friend, you know, spoke to you or shared a compliment? Did you just brush by it? Or did you actually take a minute to receive that? Or did you say, I love you to that person because you slowed down enough and you weren't running off the, out the door and just like, oh, see you. But maybe mm-hmm. you actually want to share, like, you're really special to me. Thank you for being in, in your, in my life. And when we slow down, I feel like there's, infinite amount of opportunity there Mm -hmm. here in hawaii the culture is to be slow big time especially in hilo area where i live like it doesn't work my my kids and i joke that there's like a spell cast on this island called (laughs) you can't go fast so we say it all the time can't go fast you try to go fast nope it's gonna be like an old lady in a walker from the road or something i mean seriously it's it, it just doesn't jive in the culture here and um, it's been so amazing. And, and on top of that, I do have the the opportunity to live. And I've only lived here a little over a year, like 15 months. And to go from a harsh climate like Utah, where I lived before, where most of the year you have to be climate controlled, the heat, central heat, central air, to a place where it's 70 something degrees year round and we can have the windows open a lot. And it's an indoor, outdoor lifestyle. When I went back to Utah recently, I just got back. I, it was so jarring. Like it gave me so much compassion. I was like, I was meditating in the mornings and all I could hear was the buzzing of like lights or something. I'm like, there's no nature guy. We've got cokey frogs here and birds. And I was like, wow. Okay. Note to self. Cause we probably are going to move back. I'm like, you got to have nature sounds going on in the house. Like all the time, <laughs> like this is not mm-hmm. good for humans. You got to make yourself, you know, I mean, I'm pretty good at getting out in nature, but like, make sure you get out there as much as you freaking can. I don't care if it's cold, you bundle up, like get out there, <laughs> you know? Um, and I do, I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of the health problems that so many are experiencing these days is a lack of time in nature. Um, just from from a sound perspective, to a calming of the nervous system perspective, to a, a presence and awe and wonder and curiosity, to the more nitty gritty things like sunlight and all the chemical conversions that happen in our bodies. I feel like not being in nature is one of the most overlooked um, aspects of the many health problems people are facing today, because we all know how we feel when we're out there a lot and we all know how we feel when we're not out there a lot. So that, I guess that's Absolutely. just a push for that. Yeah. I, um, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think most illness is exactly what you said. 
either a disconnection from our inner nature, which often happens through a disconnection with the nature around us, because we forget that we are nature. You know, we're part of the the flora and fauna of this planet and the biological, you know, life forces that are here. And it's easy to forget when we're, you know, sort of on phones and meetings and, you know, living lives. And so that's a, a necessity in my life is to be in the forest as much as I can. And I always find nature is 100% successful. You know, when I go for a walk in the forest, I don't think there's ever been a time I don't feel better after, no matter Mm -hmm. what's going on, because nature doesn't rush. There's a deeper wisdom that's there that I think can remind our bodies of, oh, yeah, I got kind of sped up or disconnected a little bit into all the the rest of life. And so it is so powerful and and so underrated. And even the natural climate control stuff you talk about, you know, we live in a a climate here, you know, I'm grateful I have a roof over my head and I've got a wood fireplace for heat, but Mm -hmm. I try not to overregulate my environment. Actually, I want my body to be able to meet with nature and we do get winter here and we get snow and I love going outside to acclimatize myself like early season to to get the body into that zone where I'm in harmony with nature as much as possible. And that's a real Chinese medicine philosophy. If you read all the old texts Mm -hmm. that have been translated, some of them we learned in school, you know, 2000 years old, 3000 years old, they would talk about living in harmony with the seasons and living in harmony with nature. So that concept, they really well understood it um, thousands of years ago, and it has kind of been forgotten. Well, I guess I have a re- lot of resonance. I didn't realize with Chinese medicine because that has been such an epiphany for me here because, yeah, I have a couple of little portable ACs for when it gets just unbearably hot. You can't even see straight. You know, sometimes that happens. But for the most part, we just have windows open. So sometimes it's hot and sometimes it's kind of cold and you're hearing the bird. You 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 hear the rain. You understand what's going on outside like all the time. Like there's this kind of connection with it all the time here that I didn't realize was missing. You know, when I went back to Utah, I was like, whoa, like everything. I don't have no idea what's happening outside. The insulation in this house is so good. I don't even think I can hear (laughs) if it was raining. Like, you know, like, I don't know what's going on out there. I'm like completely isolated. So that's really cool. And I love that you um, talked about like allowing yourself to get a little uncomfortable with your, I think that's very wise and something that we could all apply more in our modern worlds where it's just like, oh, no, I like 72, not 73. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I wanted to take a second to talk about your new human event. Um, Cause I saw you promoting this all over. I saw like Zach Bush was there and it, just, it I actually, Kevin, I looked into it. I was like, this looks dope. I'm going to go to this. I'm, I've never been to Canada. I was like, I'm going to go up to this, but I couldn't cause my ex-husband was in Spain. So going to Spain during the same time. So I couldn't like leave all my kids by themselves, but I I would (laughs) like to come to one. It looks really cool. So can you, can you talk about that event, like what it is and why you made it? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, first of all, yeah, we had a tremendous time and, uh, Dr. Zach Bush was one of the speakers, Charles Eisenstein. And, you know, I, I wanted to have, um, a soul family feel gathering, and mm-hmm. we had pretty much 500 people there. I had a big crew and we were awesome. in a, an indigenous cultural center and mm-hmm. it's made out of logs is like a traditional style roundhouse, but cool. like 30,000 square feet. And so, wow. yeah, it's on the spot scene, uh, indigenous territory, just north of where I live here. And mm-hmm. so collaborating with the land and the people there and bringing that into wow. the event was a big part of it. The, um, the new human in general is something that came through a couple of years ago in meditation and I'd already been leading different events and I've been leading retreats for years and I was envisioning something bigger, you know, for one day or two days. And and so that name was actually what dropped in around that because I knew I needed to call it something and that mm-hmm. showed up and I don't know where sometimes the guidance <laughs> comes from or, or where right. these things originate, but I don't think it was my idea, but I could feel mm-hmm. that, oh, I, I want to action this. I want to bring this into form in the world and let's get other people and speakers and let's let's do some really deep level healing over a couple of days and see what would happen if we bring everybody into connection in a very specific energy and a specific intention that we're going to get really deeply into all of those pieces that create wellness and that maybe contribute to illness and let's unpack that stuff. So we've done three new human events now. And yeah, the most recent one was with uh, Zach and Charles had a few other dear friends of mine speaking and we had a real balance between the masculine and the feminine. 
and we really went into the depth and everybody that was on that stage, it's kind of a prerequisite to be a very heart led, open hearted human being that authentically cares about people that authentically cares about the planet. I think Zach and Charles exemplify that and it resonates so much with my work as well. Um, friend of mine, Courtney and Mike, their you know, relationship coaches and they work with couples and she's a somatic therapist and they, they brought those pieces in. So we, we really went through a lot of layers around yes. what makes us human, but then we were able to unpack that. And so we definitely did some deep process work where I don't think there was a dry eye in that place that the the realness of being human because to me that's part of what the new human is is that it involves the depth of all the feelings that we have not just cherry picking the the fun moments or like right. the moments of bliss and excitement but if we're going to feel all those things we got to go into the grief we got to go into the anger the the judgment and so we did forgiveness processes that were life-changing i was actually just talking to some people this morning that were at the event and we're you know we're a month later now and they said kevin I'm still integrating all these pieces and like, this was super impactful and this was really impactful and just seeing that wave ripple out is really exciting and so we've got another one planned for October 2025. Oh, nice. I'm okay. working on you know getting some awesome speakers in I'm on stage as well and I like going into the nitty gritty places we don't want to bypass anything we want to do the real work and I know that's said a lot in our society but embodying the things that we talk about is also where the rubber hits the road so we we do spend a lot of time on like really getting it into people's bodies and getting it into the nervous system and it was maybe about a week ago we did a, a post event integration zoom call where mm -hmm. everybody at the event can jump on and then we go through things and I, I let a process around that too to let's actually deepen this cool. more how yeah. are you how are you showing up in your lives in your relationships and all those little micro moments where there's an opportunity to actually create a shift in your patterning and, and behavior and so that that's a little snapshot of the the new human mm -hmm. events and excited to just keep rolling with that. It seems like there's a lot of energy behind that and yeah. just great connection and community. And I feel like a lot of people find their people there, if that makes yeah. sense, that right. you know, there's a lot of people that sometimes feel alone or alienated or they don't really fit somewhere because maybe they see things at a higher level. They see where we're going in, in society mm -hmm. and how things are changing and shifting on the planet that, oh no, these are things that we really need to pay attention to right. now. Like, let's let's get in there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's fun too. We get we have some fun and some laughs while we're doing the deep work. Mm, that's super right. I, anybody listening who knows me well is like, oh, I see why she wanted to go to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get I'll get that. I also have an event I haven't even announced yet in t October 2025, but uh, I'm okay. To make sure it's not on the same date. So once you <laughs> do, you have your dates yet for that? Yeah, the third, fourth, and fifth is is okay. what we're looking at for October, and we ended up selling a bunch of tickets already to the group that was there, and then we'll do a release in okay. the, the coming months to the general public, and you know see what happens. So maybe okay, let cool. me know when your event is posted yeah. or the dates on that, because that'd be kind Mine's of cool later. To... <laughs> I, I can, I think I can do it. I think I can do it. That'll be right All before. Right. Be my birthday it's right before my birthday i'll be my birthday present to myself i'll Perfect. probably be there and it looks so it's so cool and i understand exactly what you're saying is like um when you're intuiting a lot of these things about what really matters and you're like you're kind of being guided and led it's so valuable to be around others who are also being guided and led that way from like a higher source of information and to like come together and bring that together because everyone gets perspectives from the others that you might not have had that expand your own um, ability to see from a broader place on those things that are coming through that matter so much. So props Absolutely. for following the intuition and making it happen and building it. And um, I guess my last question is how else can people like learn from you? Do you have a podcast? Is that what I'm seeing on your page? Yeah, I, I do okay. have a podcast. It's called the new human experience with okay. Dr. Kevin Preston. <laughs> and we don't have tons of episodes, but there's some meaty material there. I've had Zach and Charles on my podcast as well and cool. other amazing guests where it is just real, authentic connecting and yeah. communication, all things health related relationships. As we know, relationships are one of the biggest influencing factors on our health, you know, like mm -hmm. above almost everything else. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. I've got a bunch more guests lined up and cool. 
you know, I think people tend to feel quite a bit with the work that we're doing, you know, whether it's podcasts or in person. And so we've got a website, uh, newhumanevents.com for more of the event side of things. There's a bunch of updates coming on there pretty quick. And then I have my drkevinpreston.com website that's more clinical. And there's a bunch of, you know, I'm in a big transformation moment as well, where I'm, I'm planning for 2025 and all the different things that I want to be of service in and how to do that in a really effective way and, you know, make an impact and mm -hmm. continuing to, uh, you know, we talked about a few times to just really tune in and listen of, yeah, how can I be of service at this time on the planet awesome. with the, the greatest level of impact that is healthy for me and healthy for everybody yeah. else around me and my family and, what does that look like? And so I'm doing my best to listen to all those things that are dropping in and, you know, building that out. So I'm on Instagram a little bit. It's just Dr. Kevin Preston as well. And, you know, people can usually pay attention to what I'm doing there. And um, yeah, yeah, it's exciting. There's lots of things coming. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Follow him on Instagram and he'll, he'll let you guys know if you, especially if you felt some resonance here, I know a lot of you guys did. I know a lot of you, you guys follow me and my work because you re you're like, you're like me. <laughs> so if you, if you feel that too, make sure you follow him because yeah, you put out amazing content and it's really appreciated to see, um, others like really aiming to bring light and like heart centered, connection into a platform that could be a completely different reality if you chose to take it that way right so i'm, I'm very intentional with my social media right like it's just like what because those are it can be beautiful if you're inviting energies that are beautiful you know and it can be chaos if you're inviting energies that are chaos so if you want more beautiful heart-centered leadership in your instagram feed follow kevin <laughs> oh, thank you so much yeah thanks yeah. for having me on today and yeah thank really you appreciate you and what you're doing you have really beautiful energy you're sharing with the world so i'm grateful to have yeah. connected here thank you so much mm -hmm.